with today's op-ed that I published over at HartmanReport.com this morning. It's titled, Time for Democrats to Wake Up on Free Trade or Pay in 2024. And, you know, I start out by pointing out, and, and I, I did an extended rant about this last week and published a piece over at Hartman Report about it, that basically we have, we're at the tail end of a 40-year period of a giant economic and political experiment called neoliberalism. Most people don't even know the name of it, but that's, that's what it's referred to as. Uh, that name was hatched at a Mont Pelerin meeting in 1947 by Hayek, Mises, and, and, and Friedman, Milton Friedman. The new liberalism, the neoliberalism. And, you know, its primary tenets are low taxes on rich people, privatization of government functions, and of course, you know, I've ranted at length about both of those things in the past, and free trade. Let corporations, let the, let the wealthy, let giant corporations basically run the world economy because the so-called free market has this magical invisible hand and it makes all things wonderful. So we bought into this. Maggie Thatcher came to, came to power in the United Kingdom, I think in 79 on this stuff, and, and Ronald Reagan in 1981 in the United States, and, and uh, they both embraced it. Now the United States and the UK uh, you know, our, our working classes, uh, our middle classes in both countries are, are damaged badly, at least in the UK. They still have free health insurance or free health care, uh, but not here. And of those three pillars, free trade is really the most explosive. And, I, I, and what I wanted to share with you is what Josh Hawley is up to. You know, the Republican field for 2024 uh, there's quite a few people in it, and if Trump makes it all the way through to 2024 and runs for president, then the battle right now is for who's going to be his VP. If not, and I'm skeptical that he's actually running for president, I think that he's, he's trying to raise as much money as he can because he's deeply in the hole. Commercial real estate right now is in big trouble, and that's where his money is, and people are running away from the Trump brand, and... and and he's got all these legal expenses and things. I, I'm averaging six, eight, ten, sometimes 10 fundraising emails. I got three of them this morning, just in the hour before we went on the air, from Donald Trump begging for money. He is, I, I mean, literally, he's got to be hitting, he, he's got to be going after the Alzheimer's vote at this point. You know, people who don't remember that just 10 minutes earlier, they gave him 50 bucks. He's just draining the checking accounts of people. But in any case, the, the, the field, the non-Trump field, is starting to form. Ron DeSantis is polling ahead of everybody, but, but I think Josh Hawley, frankly, is the most serious candidate. He published, uh, actually, a, a pretty good book on how big tech is snooping on all of us. Uh, last year, came out with this book. It's, it's very partisan. I mean, you know, he's constantly attacking Democrats in it, but it, it's actually a thoughtful book. A smart guy and a lawyer. And, and now he published this piece in the New York Times last week, or maybe the week before, I, I forget which, but in the last two weeks. And I just want to share with you a few, a few excerpts from Josh Hawley's piece. Now, keep in mind, what he's saying here is something that no Republican has said since 1979. Since Reagan in 1980 in the primaries in the late 79 and in the primaries in 1980 made voodoo economics acceptable. And frankly, very few Democrats have been saying since 1992 when Bill Clinton bought into this. But it is the stuff that Bernie Sanders has been saying all along, that Sherrod Brown has been saying all along, that Congressman Mark Pocan has been saying all along. So here's what Josh Hawley had to say in the New York Times. He said the problems have been brewing for decades. He's talking about trade. And he's right, by the way. It was, it was Reagan who renegotiated the GATT treaty that set up the WTO. It was Reagan and Bush who negotiated NAFTA, even though Clinton signed it. So now, Hawley says in the next sentence, as he turns his back on Reagan in this the New York Times piece, he said, now we must change course. We can rebuild what made this nation great in the first place by making things in America again. Now, you will recall this was at the core of Donald Trump's campaign, both his primary in 2015. It was, the one, it was one of about two or three topics, but it, I, I think it was the number one topic that Trump used to pound during the primaries in 2015 and early 2016, the Republican primaries, 
Trump pounded on this, and there was not one single Republican who would defend him. All the other Republicans are like, oh, no, free trade. We need free trade. It's all good stuff. And Trump is like, no, no, it's killing the American worker. And all across, particularly the Rust Belt, the old industrial Midwest, and across the South, people were going, what? Democrats voting for Trump. Yeah, bring back our damn jobs. So here, Josh Hawley is stepping into this space. It's a wide open space because most Republicans are pro-free trade. Most Democrats are pro-free trade. And here's Josh Hawley. He says, whether it be personal protective equipment, pharmaceutical drugs, or semiconductors, the coronavirus pandemic has exposed a hard truth. The United States, the strongest country in the world, cannot produce an adequate supply of the critical goods it needs. He points out in the op-ed as well that, you know, these so-called supply chain problems all has to do with this stuff. He continues in his New York Times piece. Again, this is the guy who wants to be the first fascist president of the United States. He said the failure of the nation's productive capacity to keep up with its needs was not inevitable. And he's absolutely right. He goes on to say it was a choice. Over the last 30 years, see, this all started with Reagan. He's not going to say it. He's a Republican. But it started, with, anyhow, over the last, I guess he's trying to identify it as starting with Clinton uh, in 92. That was when, or 93 was when he signed NAFTA. But, you know, it really goes back a decade before that. Anyhow, he says it was a choice. Over the past 30 years, experts and politicians in Washington from both parties helped build a global economic system that prioritized the free flow of capital over the wages of American workers and the free flow of goods over the resiliency of our nation's supply chains. We liberalized and expanded trade relations with China under the delusion that it could be influenced into becoming a peace-loving democracy. And he's absolutely right. Thomas Friedman was out there selling this stuff with his book, The Lexus and the Olive Tree, remember that? And his McDonald's theory that no two nations with McDonald's have ever come to war. That, by the way, has been blown up. It was a colossal idiocy at the time. It still is. So Hawley continues. He says, the consequences of these bad policies have been disastrous. They've created trade patterns that have helped multinational corporations boost their profits by exploiting cheap labor abroad and offshoring America's industrial commons and the capabilities of its manufacturing sector. As a result, thousands of factories have shuttered. Millions of jobs have been shipped overseas. And the economic security of the United States is now more vulnerable to unpredictable crises like global pandemics. And America is dangerously dependent on the capacity of China, our chief adversary. These policies were sold to us as a path to greater wealth, but they've made us weaker and more vulnerable. Josh Hawley is absolutely right. And that's the thing, you know, when a politician is actually telling people the truth, and in this case, you know, he's overlooking the inconvenient part of it, which is that it was the Republican Party that first pioneered this. But yeah, the party jumped in with both feet as well in 1992. And it's only been the progressives. It's been, you know, by and large, the con progressive congressional caucus has been the one group of, of politicians in Washington, D.C., who have largely and consistently fought against so-called free trade policies. And it helps get them elected. And Josh Hawley is, basically, this is the opening shot in the 2024 presidential race. Now, Hawley is also testing other things. There's another story, there's a great summary of it over at Daily Coast today, about how he just, uh, just this week came out and basically said, you're not a manly man, you know, if you don't have children or if you watch pornography. He's testing what social issues will be next. You, you'll recall, it was about a year ago that they started testing the whole critical race theory hysteria. Among a, a dozen other topics, they went after bathroom, after trans kids, they went after, you know, they went after uh, the Mr. Potato Head. You know, the Republicans constantly have to have outrage. It's the thing that drives their machine. And so Hawley, in addition to proposing uh, here's how we're going to go forward and make America stronger and more secure, which is, you know, end so-called free trade. He's also got to come up with his social issues. And so he's testing them. He's going to continue doing that over the next year and a half, two years. 
He's going to be throwing stuff out. Right now it's porn and, and not having children. Next week it'll be something else, you know. He's, he, until he finds the topic that he thinks will have the, enough staying power that they can make it go big in 2024, the social issue. Because they've got to have, you know, the, the, typically with Republicans, the serious policy issue is tax cuts. And the social issue is whatever the social issue is du jour. Right? I mean, you can, you can remember this from George Herbert Walker Bush going after Michael Dukakis for letting uh, uh, Willie Horton out of prison. In fact, it was the previous Republican governor's program that did it. But hey, you know, you got to have outrage.